Hello grade 11s and welcome back to another video where we're going to be using the component method in order to find the resultant or net vector. I've done a video like this before where we worked on a basic example. So if you missed that video, check the description box below. In this video, we're going to do a slightly more challenging example. Other vector videos in my playlist will also be linked below. This question is an exam level question, so I hope you understand each step. Remember to take it down in your book as a good example to have when studying for your exams. Let's jump right into the question. Now in the previous video, we did a more simple example. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend clicking the link in the description box below to check that one out first. We went over all of these steps and we will be applying these steps again today in this lesson. So I hope all these steps from the previous lesson make sense. We did this question. Now let's apply it to our new, more challenging exam question. So first of all, like we did in the previous lesson, our first step when we have vectors in multiple directions like this acting at an angle relative to the x and the y axis is we need to break down these vectors into their components or what it's called is resolving vectors into their components now as soon as you see an angle so vectors adding acting at an angle so in other words they're not acting straight up or straight to the left or straight to the right or straight down they're acting at an angle you know you need to apply step one which is resolving vectors into their components now what we do is we take each vector i'm going to label them it's going to make our job a little bit easier so i'm going to call the 40 newton vector a i'm going to call the 25 newton vector b and i'm going to call the 15 newton vector c now what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw little triangles and with this, these triangles, we will see how these vectors will be broken down into their horizontal or their X components and their vertical or their Y components. Let me draw the triangle for A to show you first as an example. So if you take a look at vector A, A is going up and to the left and there's an angle of 80 degrees given over here. So all I've done is I've broken A up into two vectors one vertical, so I'm going to call this AY because it's going along the y-axis, and one horizontal, AX. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to show you how to break down these vectors, and I'm going to separate it away from the diagram so that it's easier to see. So this is the 80 degrees. That is vector A. We broke that down into AY pointing up and AX pointing to the left. If you forget which way it should be pointing, so should AX be pointing to the left or to the right, just look at which way A is pointing. A is pointing up and to the left. So AX must be pointing to the left and AY must be pointing up. How do I draw a little triangle for B? Well, B is going like this, okay, at an angle over here of 10 degrees. So how I would break B up, this is B, is B is going down and to the right. So I will draw one vector going down, that's BY, and one vector going to the right, that's BX. And then I'll do one for C as well. So look at C, C is going like that at an angle of 45 degrees. Breaking that down into its triangle, I've got C is going down and to the left. So CY will go down and CX will go to the left, that's CX. Now, it obviously doesn't help just to break them down into these little triangles. I need to use trig alongside these triangles to help me work out what CX is and what CY is and what BX is and BY and so on. So we work out the components using trig. So to work out AX and AY, I'm going to use my trig ratios. So let's start with AX. If I'm looking for AX, look at the angle that you're given, the 80 degrees. AX is adjacent to my 80 degrees and what cause um, what ratio what trig ratio is adjacent it will be cos because adjacent of hypotenuse is cos and ax is adjacent to my angle so i'm going to go 40 cos 80 newton and which way is ax pointing it's pointing to the left ay look at where ay is relative to the angle it's opposite the angle and opposite is sine or sin. So I'm going to go 40 sine 80 Newton. And which way is AY pointing? It's pointing up. Now, 
if you are not sure where I'm getting 40 sine 80 and 40 cos 80, why am I writing it like that? And why am I not writing it in its ratio form? I did go over that in the previous videos in this playlist, so you might want to check that out. But the shortcut is you write the hypotenuse first. This is the hypotenuse, 40, then the trig ratio, and then the angle. Okay, let's do vector B. Now looking at my little diagram over here for B, if I'm looking for BX, I use the 10 degree angle and BX is adjacent to my angle. So I'm going to go 25 cos 10 Newton. I'm using cos because adjacent, BX is adjacent. And my BX vector, look which way it's pointing, it's pointing to the right. So I'm going to write to the right and BY, look at BY. BY is opposite my 10 degrees, and we know opposite is sine, so we're going to go 25 sine 10 Newton. And which way is it pointing? It's pointing down. Okay, it's pointing down. You can see over there. We do the same for vector C. If we look at CX over here, here is CX. CX is adjacent to my angle, so I'm going to use cos. So 15 cos 45 Newton. And which way is CX going? It's pointing that way. It's pointing to the left. And then CY is opposite my 45 degree angle. So I'm going to use sine. So 15 sine 45 Newton. And which way is CY pointing? It's pointing down. If you are still confused with how I get this. I did it in a lot more detail in the previous two videos. So remember to check out the links below. But this is always step one. And yes, it does help to write these directions here next to it. And no, I'm not going to work out what 40 cos 80 is. You can if you want. But if you do, remember not to round off. Just keep reminding yourself that your first step is to always break up all vectors acting at an angle relative to the x-axis or to the y-axis into their components using trig. You absolutely have to do it. And the reason why I do it is because I know how to work with vectors that go along the horizontal, so along the x-axis, so either left or right, and vectors that go along the vertical, so either up or down. We're going to group these together. So everything going left or right, they go together. So all the x's go together. So ax, bx, and cx, everything going left or right goes together and everything going up or down goes together so all the the y's a y b y and c y now what i mean by goes together this leads us to our second step we have to choose positive directions and we have to calculate the resultant or the overall in the x direction and the resultant or the overall in the y direction and what this means grade 11s is basically you have to take all the little pieces that are going left or right and you have to add them up you have to take all the little pieces that are going up or down and you have to add them up. That's going to get us one vector going left or right and one vector going up or down. Then we can draw a right angle triangle where we use Pythagoras and where we use tan theta. So let's do that. Let's first choose our positive directions. Now it doesn't matter which way you choose as positive, but I tend to choose up as positive and to the right as positive. It does not matter. You can choose down as positive, you can choose to the left as positive, as long as you choose one vector in the vertical for being positive, so either up or down, and one vector in the horizontal, so either left or right. So I chose up and to the right as positive. Then calculate Rx, and remember Rx is the resultant vector in the x direction. So we're gonna add up Ax, Bx, and CX. I'm starting off with plus signs, but remember, some of them might be negative depending on their direction. So remember, all the ones going left, right are highlighted in yellow. So let's just do that again quickly. Now, what I'm going to do is if it's going to the right, like this one is going to the right, I will substitute that in as a positive because I chose right as positive. All the ones that are going to the left, I need to substitute in as negative. So AX will be negative 40 cos 80. BX, because it's going to the right, will be positive 25 cos 10. And CX, because it's going to the left, will be negative 15 cos 45. We use our calculators, type all of that in just as you see it, and you will get your resultant in the x direction or in the horizontal direction. 
and I get 7, 0, 6, so on and so forth, newtons. And is my answer positive or negative? Well, my calculator gave it to me as a positive answer. And remember, positive, we said, means to the right. So I'm going to write to the right over here. So we need to do this again. That was step three. We need to do that again for step four, but this time we're going to calculate Ry, so the net vector in the y direction. So what I've done now is I've highlighted all the ones up and down, up and down in green. So those are the ones I'm going to add together, Ay, By plus Cy. I know I started off with plus signs. That's because you always start off with a vector sum, vector addition. Now remember, I chose up as positive. So I'm going to write in this one, Ay, as positive because it's going up. So 40 sine 80 is going up. So I'm writing it as positive. By and Cy are going down. So I'll need to write both of those in with negative. So negative 25 sine 10 and minus or negative 15 sine 45. Just because of the direction. I chose up as positive. So if it's going down, you need to substitute it in as a negative. You take your calculator, let's work out Ry, and I get 24,4445039,6 Newton. And did I get a positive answer or did I get a negative answer? My calculator told me this came out as a positive answer, and we chose up as positive. So this direction is up. Now, please, grade 11s, take note how in the previous example over here, when I got Rx, so in step 3, I did not round off. I left Rx with all its decimal places. And I did the same in step four with Ry. I left Ry with all its decimal places. The reason why is because I'm not at the end of my question. And the rule in physics is not to round off until you get to the end of a question. So step three and step four, that's the middle of the question. We can't round off. Right, now what do we do once I have Rx and Ry? Well, remember, I said if you have one vector in the x direction, and one vector in the y direction, look what we can make. We can make a 90 degree triangle where I can use Pythagoras to work out the resultant and I can use tan theta to work out the angle for that resultant. Let me show you the steps. So we've done up till step four now. Our next step is step five, which is basically what I said. You draw a head to tail diagram with your resultant x that we just calculated and your resultant y, which we just calculated, and you draw in the resultant, the overall resultant vector, which will be the hypotenuse. Then you use Pythagoras, then you use tan theta, and then you write out or you, you state your final, final, final answer. So do a head to tail vector diagram with resultant x and resultant y. Now, how do we do this? Well, remember, our resultant x is going to the right. So we draw a vector going to the right like that. Let's call it Rx. You can write 7,06, blah, blah, blah over here, but I'm just going to label it Rx. And then our Ry is going up. So I'm going to draw a vector going up, and I'm going to label it Ry. Remember, this is a head to tail vector diagram. So head of Rx touching tail of Ry. And then it says over here, you draw in your resultant vector. And the resultant vector always goes from the tail of the first, pointing to the head of the last. I'm going to call that big R, overall resultant. Basically, that's our net force that we're looking for. And I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle in over here. And this is actually a step that comes in later, but I'm just going to do it now. I'm going to draw in the angle that I will be looking for later on in the question. And the angle, I'm going to call it theta, always goes in the corner of your triangle where there are no arrowheads. So in other words, over there, there's no arrowheads over here. That's where my theta goes. Okay, so just keep in mind that this resultant vector, the overall, that is that one over here. We find the magnitude of that vector using Pythagoras. Remember, the magnitude is the size, the amount but remember, we, the, the vector is a net force vector. It's a F net. The question said calculate the net force. Let's go back to the question. Actually, the question says calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. Another way that this question can be phrased is calculate the net force 
acting at point O or acting at the origin or something. But they're actually making it easier for you. They're telling you they want magnitude and direction. Magnitude we get using Pythagoras. Direction we get using tan theta and then either the compass points or the positive x axis. So what we're going to do after you draw your triangle, you know you're going to use Pythagoras to work out the magnitude. Let's do that. That is my next step. It's step six. So what I've done is I've just written the magnitude of the resultant Rx and Ry on the little diagram for you so you can see what's going on. So now remember when we do Pythagoras, we're looking for the hypotenuse, that is r squared equals rx squared plus ry squared. And we are doing Pythagoras because we are doing this, applying the Pythagorean theorem, you have to write Pythagoras. And then we actually substitute in and solve for r. So basically what I do is I kind of write it like this on my calculator, do a shortcut kind of method thing. It's 7 comma 0 6 dot 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 squared plus 24 comma 44 dot 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 squared. Note how I'm saying dot dot dot. I'm saying that because you actually need to type the full values in on your calculator. You cannot round off yet at this point or you may get the incorrect answer. Now I get 25 comma 45 Newton and I know you're probably saying but ma'am you rounded off now. I know I did but because of this is my final answer for magnitude. Remember, the question asked for the magnitude and the direction. This, I called it R, but you could have called it F net. It's the resultant force, it's the net force, it's the resultant vector. But now how do I do the direction? You need to do step seven, which is when we put theta in the corner of the triangle. I've already done that, there's theta. And then I use tan theta to work out the angle. So let's do that. So you should remember that tan is opposite, so the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now looking at what I've got over here, I'm looking for theta, remember? So tan theta, theta is my unknown, I'm looking for that angle. What is opposite theta? Well, Ry is opposite theta. So it's 24 comma 4, 4, 4, and I'm going to say dot, 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 but that's just because you have to type the whole thing on, in on your calculator. Opposite over adjacent, what is adjacent to theta? It is the 7 comma 0, 06 dot 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 7 comma 0, 06 dot 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 let's do this on our calculator remember you must shift tan type in the fraction and i get 73 comma 87 degrees but that is not my final 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 answer i can't just say that the vector is acting at 73 comma 87 degrees you have to tell me if it's going north of east or east of north or clockwise relative to the positive x-axis or anti-clockwise you have to give me a proper direction so how do we do this i have a video where i go over vector directions in a lot of detail but look at where r is r is going up and to the right so it's in this quadrant over here up and to the right this would be going left this would be going down so it's not in those quadrants Theta is over here, it's underneath my vector line. This is north, east, south, west. This vector is going to the north of east. If theta had to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it'll go to the north of east. So it's north of east, not east of north. Don't make that mistake. Another thing that you could also say is you could um, state the direction relative to the positive x-axis. So here's the positive x-axis. We go 73,87 degrees anti-clockwise relative to the positive x-axis. Two different ways to state direction. So it's either 73,87 degrees north of east or you can say anti-clockwise relative to the positive x-axis. Step nine is to write your full, complete answer with your magnitude, which you got from Pythagoras, your angle, which you got from tan theta, and your direction, which we just figured out using the Cartesian plane. So that is your full and final answer. Just take note how all the pieces of the answer must be there for you to get your marks. So magnitude from using Pythagoras, that was step six, angle using tan theta that was step seven and step eight and then your 
actual direction. So either using compass points or using the positive X axis as your reference point. That is an exam question. I hope that helped you. Remember, if you need a more simpler example or a video where I go through these steps in more detail, a bit slower, you can click the link in the description box below. And I hope to see you guys in the next video where I do objects in equilibrium and closed vector diagrams. Subscribe for more physics. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.